So hi everyone, my name is Shivam Bora. Welcome to the official channel of Code Shift. So if you want to learn and master data structures and algorithms, or if you want to do really good at competitive programming, then this is a one-stop destination for you. Now before we actually get started, here's a quick reminder for you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already yet. So the prerequisite for this particular course is the basic knowledge of C++ and the following data structures and algorithms. Now this is the last video of this particular series in which we are going to learn four new containers. But before that, let's quickly discuss the time complexities of some of the functions that we have seen till now. Now in vectors, the time complexity of this begin function, the end function and the size function is big of one while the time complexity of this erase function is big of n. In stacks, queues and dq, the time complexities of all the functions is big of 1, right? And in priority queues, the time complexity of this push function and the pop function is log in. While the time complexity of this size function and the stop is constant or big of one. Now let me remove the code of this vector. So now we have these four containers stack, queue, dq and priority queue, right? Now out of these four containers, only dq allows random access to any element, right? And this random access could be done in big of one time complexity. Now here I haven't written the push front or the pop front or the pop back function, but the time complexities of all those function is also big of one, right? And also the size of this queue. Now the next container that we have is list, right? Which is simply the implementation of the doubly linked list. So to use a list, we have to include this header file called as list and to declare this list, we can easily write list, then the data, data type of this list and then the name of this list, right? So this is very similar to the declaration part that we have seen in these four containers, right? So this list is very similar to the DQ because in DQs, we can push or pop from any end of the DQ. So just like DQs, we can push or pop elements from any end of the list, right? So let me insert some elements. So using the push back function and the push front function, I have inserted some elements inside my list L, right? So, so using this push back function, I'll insert four from the back side, right? So I have inserted four. Again, using the push back function, I'll insert one from the right side. So on the right side of this four, I have inserted one, right? Using the push front function, I'll insert this three from the front side, right? From the front side or from the left side. So now this three would be inserted on the very left side, right? So three is inserted on the left side of this list, right? Again, this two would be inserted on the right side. So this two is inserted on the right side, right? And again, this five would be inserted on the right side. So this is my list. Now let me print this list. For this, I can simply use a loop. So I'll write for, for int i colon l, small l. Then I'll simply print i, i and then space. So now this, this should print the list in this order. So here we can see that the list has been printed, right? Now using this for loop, we cannot print the elements of the stack queue or priority queue. However, we can print the elements of the DQ using this for loop, right? So if I, if I print this code or if I paste this code of this for loop, and I replace this L with Q because the name of this DQ is Q. Then this should print the elements of this DQ, right? So here we can see that the elements of this DQ, 
1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 has been printed by this for loop, right? Now, the only difference, the only difference between this DQ and this list is that in DQs, in DQs, we can randomly access, we can randomly access any element of this DQ, right? But in in list, in a list, we cannot, we cannot randomly access any element of this list, right? So if I try to access the fourth element of this list, then this would give us an error, right? Now the time complexity of all these functions, the push back, pop back, push front, pop front, front back and size inside a list is big of one, right? Now the next container that we have is a set or an ordered set, right? So to use a set or an ordered set, we have to include this header file called as set and to declare it simply write, we simply have to write set, then the data type of the elements and then the name of this set, right? Now, a set has two properties that is by default, by default, the elements inside this set would be in sorted order and there would be no duplicates inside this set, right? So let me insert some elements. So I'll write set name dot insert, insert, and then the element to be inserted. Similarly, let me insert some more. And to print it, I can use a loop. So I'll write int i colon s and then c out, c out i space. So if I run this code now, then here we can see that the elements of this set are printed. So firstly, the elements are in ascending order, are sorted and are and are in ascending order. And also here we can see that I have inserted three twice, right? I have inserted this three twice, but a set cannot store duplicates, right? So if I insert this three the second time, then it would simply ignore this, ignore this three, right? So here, here we can see that this three is printed just once. Now a random access to a particular element inside this set is not allowed, right? So if let's say I want to access this three inside this set, then for that I have to use an iterator it. And after that I'll use a loop. I'll write while, while star it is not equals to three, right? And then I'll increment my iterator it plus it plus plus right. So now my iterator would increment itself till the value of this iterator becomes three right. So initially my iterator is over here, then it be, then it came here, then it came here right. And at this at this position it would stop. Now if I want to delete this three then I can use that erase function. I'll write s dot erase erase and inside the braces inside this these round braces. I'll put the iterator it right. So if I run this code now, then here we, here we can see that the element three has been deleted through this iterator right. Now we have another container very similar to this set. Now in sets, we cannot have duplicates, but in this container multi set, we can have duplicates, right? To use a multi set, we again have to include the same header file called as set. And here I have inserted these five elements. And if I run, run this code now, then here we can see that three, which was inserted twice has been printed twice, right? So after removing this second condition, then this set would become a multi set, right? Because a multi set can contain duplicates. And if I remove the first condition of being sorted, then this set becomes this set becomes an unordered set, right? So an unordered set is a set which is not in any order or which is not in ascending order on it or in descending order. And it also does not have any duplicates, right? So if I run this code now, 
then here we can see that this output has no duplicates right but here i have inserted this three twice so unordered set has no duplicates to use this set we have to include this header file called as unordered set right and also the difference between this set multi set and another unordered set is that to insert an element inside this set the time complexity would be log in to erase an element the time the time complexity would again be log in and and in multi set the time complexity is again the same login for inserting and login for erasing an element but in unordered set the time complexity for insert or for erase is big of one right now the next container that we have is a map or an ordered map right so to use a map we have to include this header file called as map and this map contains a pair right which means that it contains two data elements so to declare a map i'll write map then the data type of the first element comma the data type of the second element then triangular base is close then the name of this map right now here here if i want to assign if let's say i want to assign or if, if let's say i write m2 equals to 3 right then now what will happen is a, 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 a pair inside this map would be created and stored which contains a value of 2 and 3 right now this map m contains a pair 2 3 right so this value 2 over here is called as the key and this value 3 over here is called as value right so m of m of key is equals to value right so this is called key and this is called value so similarly let me add some more so i'll write m of 1 is equals to is equals to 4 and m of 5 is equals to let's say 6 and m of 7 is equals to let's say 3 right so i have inserted some pairs 2 3 1 4 5 6 and 7 3 inside this map now to print the elements of this map i'll write for int i not int i since the data type of this map or the type of this map is a pair because it contains a pair so i'll write for pair and the first data element is int and the second one is also int so i'll write int comma int and then i then colon then the name of this map m and here i'll simply print i dot first first then space and then i dot second right and after that let me just change the line so so if i run this code now then then here we can see that the elements of this map or the pairs of this map are printed right one four two three five six seven three right now the reason why we call this map as an ordered map is because this is sorted in ascending order right here here we can see that the elements or the pairs are sorted in ascending order according to their according to their keys right a, a lower key because one is is a smaller key would be would be appear or would appear first and a larger key like seven would appear at the end right and just like maps we have another container called as unordered maps right unordered maps so this one this map would not contain or would not print elements in ascending order so if i run this code now then here we can see that the elements are not in ascending order right now if let's say i want to access any particular value inside this map then i can access the value using its corresponding key right so if i want to access this value 5 then i have to use its corresponding key 4 right so to print the value 5 i'll write m of 4 
So now m of 4, m of 4 would give us 5. So if I run this code now, then here we can see that the output is 5, right? Or the value associated with this key 4 is 5. Now if I try to print m of 9, now m of 9 is not described over here, right? So the value associated with this 9 would be 0, right? Or the default value of all the or the default value of all the keys that we haven't inserted inside this map is 0, right? So m of 9 would print 0. Similarly, similarly, we can also access the values of unordered maps using their keys as well. So in this particular case, m of 3 is 2. So if I run this code, then m of 3 would print 2. So here we can see that our output is 2. Now, the time complexity of this insertion of elements and this random axis of elements inside this ordered map is big O of log n. While the time complexity of this insertion and this accessing of elements is big O of 1 in un unordered maps, right? And all the header files that we have seen in this particular series, they all can be replaced with just one header file called as bits slash std c plus plus dot h side. So using this one header file, I can access all the functions of all the header files that we have seen till now, right?